सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ सोशल साइंसेस फॉर क्लास सेवन ऑडियो बुक सोशल एंड पोलिटिकल लाइफ पार्ट टू क्लास सेवन यूनिट थ्री टाइटल्ड जेंडर दिस यूनिट हैज टू चैप्टर्स इन इट चैप्टर फोर टाइटल्ड ड्रोइंग अप एज बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स एंड चैप्टर फाइव Women change the world. Chapter four, titled "Growing Up as Boys and Girls," page number forty-two, unit three, gender. Page number forty-three. Teacher's note: Gender is a term that you may often have heard. It is a term, however. that is not easily understood it tends to remain distant from our lives and restricted to discussions during training programs in fact it is something that all of us experience in our lives on a daily basis it determines for example who we are and what we will become where we can go and where not the life choices available to us and those we eventually make Our understanding of gender is often based on the family and society that we live in. This leads us to think that the roles we see men and women around us play are fixed and natural. In fact, these roles differ across communities around the world. By gender, then we mean the many social values and stereotypes our culture attach to the biological distinction male and female. It is a term that helps us to understand many of the inequalities and power relations between men and women in society. The following two chapters explore the concept of gender without actually using the term. Instead, through different pedagogic tools like case studies, stories, classroom activities, data analysis and photographs, students are encouraged to question and think about their own lives and the society around them gender is often mistakenly thought to be something that concerns women or girls alone thus care has been taken in these chapters to draw boys into the discussion as well chapter 4 uses two case studies situated in different places and points in time to show how girls and boys are brought up or socialized differently this enables them to understand that the process of socialization is not uniform instead it is socially determined and changes continuously over time the chapter also addresses the fact that society is assigned different values to the roles men and women play and the work they do which becomes a basis for inequality and discrimination through a storyboard students discuss the issue of housework done primarily by women housework is often not considered work and therefore made invisible and devalued chapter 5 further develops ideas around gender inequalities in the world of work and describes women's struggle for equality Through a classroom activity, students begin questioning existing stereotypes regarding work and career choices. The chapter also points out that opportunities like education are not equally available to boys and girls. By reading about the lives of two Indian women from the 19th and 20th centuries, students see how women struggled to change their lives by learning to read and write. change on a large scale usually takes place through collective struggles the chapter concludes with a photo essay that gives example of different strategies the women's movement has used to fight for change page number 44 chapter 4 growing up as boys and girls being a boy or a girl is an important part of one's identity The society we grow up in teaches us what kind of behavior is acceptable for girls and boys, what boys and girls can or cannot do. We often grow up thinking 
that these things are exactly the same everywhere. But do all societies look at boys and girls in the same way? We will try and answer this question in this chapter. We will also look at how the different roles assigned to boys and girls prepare them for their future roles as men and women. We will learn that most societies value men and women differently. The roles women play and the work they do are usually valued less than the roles men play and the work they do. This chapter will also examine how inequalities between men and women emerge in the area of work. Here on page number 44, there is a picture given. In this picture, there are different items given which may be used by boys and girls. The items are pants, computer, sunglasses, razor, a toy car, book, frock, bat, a pitcher, a screwdriver, a lipstick, a wallet, a yarn, a pan, some flowers, a broom, a cap, a doll, shoes and a hammer. Page number 45 Growing up in Samoa in the 1920s the Samoan Islands are part of a large group of small islands in the southern part of the Pacific Ocean. In the 1920s, according to research reports on Samoan society, children did not go to school. They learned many things, such as how to take care of children or do household work from older children and from adults. Fishing was a very important activity on the islands. Young people, therefore, learned to undertake long fishing expeditions. But they learned these things at different points in their childhood. Here on page number 45, there is a picture of a Samoan child in his school uniform. As soon as babies could walk, their mothers or other adults no longer looked after them. Older children, often as young as five years old, took over this responsibility. Both boys and girls looked after their younger siblings. But by the time a boy was about nine years old, he joined the older boys in learning outdoor jobs like fishing and planting coconuts. Girls had to continue looking after small children or do errands for adults till they were teenagers. But once they became teenagers, they had much more freedom. After the age of 14 or so, girls also went on fishing trips, worked in the plantations, learned how to weave baskets. Cooking was done in special cooking houses where boys were supposed to do most of the work while girls helped with the preparations. In what ways do the experiences of Samoan children and teenagers differ from your own experiences of growing up? Is there anything in this experience that you wish was part of your growing up? There is a picture given here on page number 45 in which some girls are going to school. The note here says, Why do girls like to go to school together in groups? Growing up male in Madhya Pradesh in the 1960s. This has been adapted from an account of experiences of being in a small town in Madhya Pradesh in the 1960s. From class 6 onwards, boys and girls went to separate schools. The girls' school was designed very differently from the boys' school. They had a central courtyard where they played in total seclusion and safety from the outside world. Page number 46 the boys' school had no such courtyard and our playground was just a big space attached to the school. Every evening, once school was over, the boys watched as hundreds of school girls crowded the narrow streets. As these girls walked on the streets, they looked so purposeful. This was unlike the boys who used the streets as a place to stand around idling to play, to try out tricks with their bicycles. For the girls, the street was simply a place to get straight home. 
The girls always went in groups, perhaps because they also carried fears of being teased or attacked. After reading the two examples given here, we realize that there are many different ways of growing up. Often we think that there is only one way in which children grow up. This is because we are most familiar with our own experiences. If we talk to elders in our family, we will notice that their childhoods were probably very different from ours. Make a drawing of a street or a park in your neighborhood. What different kinds of activities young boys and girls may be engaged in? You could do this individually or in groups. Are there as many girls as boys in your drawing? Most probably, you would have drawn fewer girls. Can you think of reasons why there are fewer women and girls in your neighborhood streets, parks and markets in the late evenings or at night? Are girls and boys doing different activities? Can you think of reasons why this might be so? What would happen if you replace the girls with the boys? Or vice versa. We also realize that societies make clear distinctions between boys and girls. This begins from a very young age. We are, for example, given different toys to play with and girls dolls. Both toys can be a lot of fun to play with. Why are girls then given dolls and boys cars? Toys become a way of telling children that they will have different futures when they become men and women. If we think about it, this difference is created in the smallest and most everyday things. How girls must dress, what games boys should play, how girls need to talk softly or boys need to be tough. All these are ways of telling children that they have specific roles to play when they grow up to be men and women. Later in life, this affects the subjects we can study or the careers we can choose. In most societies, including our own, the roles men and women play or the work they do are not valued equally. Men and women do not have the same status. Let us hear as to how this difference exists in the work done by men and women. Page number 47 on page number 47, there is a story given with the help of diagrams. The title of the story is, My Mother Does Not Work. In this story, a young girl and her mother are talking to each other. Ma, we are going on a school excursion. Rosie ma'am needs volunteers. Can't you take a holiday from office and volunteer? Harmeet's mother always comes for excursions because she doesn't work. Shonali, how can you say that? You know that Jaspreet auntie is up at 5 a.m. every day doing all the housework. Yes, but that's not real work. It's just housework. Oh, that's what you think, do you? Let's go over to their house and ask Jaspreet what she thinks. At the Singh's house. Harsharan, Shunali thinks that your wife is not a working person. But isn't that correct, auntie? My mother is a housewife. She does not work. <laughs> then just breathe. Why don't you just relax and let them manage everything for a change? Great idea. Okay. I'll go on strike tomorrow. What fun! We'll take care of everything tomorrow with Papa. Next morning, 7.30 a.m. Oh God, look at the time. Where's my breakfast? Why aren't the children ready? How would I know? I'm on strike, remember? Besides, Mangala has also taken leave today. Oh no, that's the school bus. I'll have to drop them in the car. Hurry, hurry! And ask Harmeet to switch on the pump. Page number 48 
the story continues ahead but what about the kids's lunch boxes oh no forgot about that i'll give you some money just buy something from the canteen today ma already gave us money for that the same day in the evening at 6 pm the bell rings i am exhausted how about some tea oh i forgot your strike i'll make some myself the house looks like it was hit by a hurricane did you expect it to remain in exactly the same condition in which you left it this morning dear harmeet where on earth are the tea leaves <laughs> i wonder if they still believe i don't work and now i have to remind them that chacha ji and chachi ji are coming for dinner valuing housework Harmeet's family did not think that the work Jaspreet did within the house was real work. This feeling is not unique to their families. Across the world, the main responsibility for housework and caregiving tasks like looking after the family, especially children, the elderly and sick members lies with women. Yet, as we have seen, the work that women do within the home is not recognized as work. It is also assumed that this is something that comes naturally to women. It therefore does not have to be paid for, and society devalues this work. Page number forty-nine. Lives of domestic workers. In the story above, Harmeet's mother was not the only one who did the housework. A lot of the work was done by Mangala, their domestic helper. Many homes, particularly in towns and cities, employ domestic workers. They do a lot of work: sweeping and cleaning, washing clothes and dishes, cooking, looking after young children or elderly. Most domestic workers are women. Sometimes, even young boys or girls are employed to do this work. Wages are low as domestic work does not have much value. A domestic worker's day can begin as early as five in the morning and end as late as twelve at night. Despite the hard work they do, their employers often do not show them much respect. This is what Melani, a domestic worker, had to say about her experience of working in Delhi. On page number forty-nine, there is a picture of a domestic worker named Melani with her daughter. she says my first job was with a rich family that lived in a three storied house the mem sahib was very strange as she would shout to get any work done my work was in the kitchen there were two other girls who did the cleaning our day would begin at 5 o'clock for breakfast we would get a cup of tea and two dry rotis we could never get a third roti in the evening when i cooked the food the two other girls would beg me to give them an extra roti i would secretly give it to them and make an extra one for myself we were so hungry after working through the day we could not wear chappals in the house in the winter our feet would swell up with the cold i used to feel scared of the mem sahib but also felt angry and humiliated did we not work all day did we not deserve to be treated with some respect wo harmeet and shunali correct in saying that harmeet's mother did not work What do you think would happen if your mother or those involved in doing the work at home went on a strike for a day? Why do you think that men and boys generally do not do the housework? Do you think they should? In fact, what we commonly term as housework actually involves many different tasks. A number of these tasks require heavy physical work. in both rural and urban areas women and girls have to fetch water 
in rural areas, women and girls carry heavy head loads of firewood. Tasks like washing clothes, cleaning, sweeping and picking up loads require bending, lifting and carrying. Many chores, like cooking, involve standing for long hours in front of hot stoves. The work women do is strenuous and physically demanding, words that we normally associate with men. Page number 50 Another aspect of housework and caregiving that we do not recognize is that it is very time-consuming. In fact, if we add up the housework and the work women do outside the home, we find that women spend much more time working than men and have much less time for leisure. Below is some data from a special study done by the Central Statistical Organization of India, 1998-1999. Can you fill in the blanks after hearing about the table given? There is a table given here on page number 50. In this table, there is a comparison given between two states of Haryana and Tamil Nadu. Here, there are different columns mentioned which say women paid the work hours per week, women unpaid housework hours per week, women in total. And then there are three columns in which the paid hours for men are given. This is a comparison between the money that is paid to women and men and the hours they put into work. Usually, women put in more working hours than men and yet are paid lesser. What are the total number of work hours spent by women in Haryana and Tamil Nadu each week? How does this compare with the total number of work hours spent by men? Many women like Shonali's mother in the story and the women in Tamil Nadu and Haryana who were surveyed work both inside and outside the home. This is often referred to as the double burden of the women's work. Women's work and equality as we have seen, the low value attached to women's household and caregiving work is not an individual or family matter. It is part of a larger system of inequality between men and women. It, therefore, has to be dealt with through actions not just at the level of the individual or the family, but also by the government. As we now know, equality is an important principle of our constitution. The Constitution says that being a male or female should not become a reason for discrimination. In reality, inequality between the sexes exists. The government is, therefore, committed to understanding the reasons for this and taking positive steps to remedy the situation. For example, it recognizes that burden of child care and housework falls on women and girls. Page number 51 Here on page number 51, there is a picture given. In this picture, children at an Aganwari center in a village of Madhya Pradesh are given. Next to this picture, again on page number 51, there is a picture by Sustainable Development Goal, SDG www.in.undp.org In this picture, some women are enjoying harvesting the crop in a field. Slogan given is Gender Equality Achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. This naturally has an impact on whether girls can attend school. It determines whether women can work outside the house and what kind of jobs and careers they can have. The government has set up Anganwadis or child care centres in several villages in the country. The government has passed laws that make it mandatory for organisations that have more than 30 women employees to provide creche facilities. The provision of creches helps many women to take up employment outside the home. It also makes it possible for more girls to attend schools. 
Here on page number 52, there is a poster given with a quotation. In this poster, women are doing different activities or things in five different pictures. In the first picture, women are protesting for some reason. In the second picture, a woman lawyer is there in the courtroom. In the third one, a woman has been picturized as a doctor holding stethoscope. In the fourth part of the picture, women are riding bike and bicycle. In the last one, women are harvesting paddy. On the left side of the picture, it is written, Main har kahi maujood. Meri andekhi aur nahi sambhav. Kaun si veh tumhari uplabdhi jisme mera nahi yeh bhaag. Aurat ko chahiye apna adhikar. Again on the same page, one more poster has been given. In this poster, an Indian Bengali woman can be seen with her ten hands. In her each hand, she is holding something like a baby, a stove, a paper and a pen, a bottle of milk or something, thread and a needle, a heart, some utensils, a broom, a bucket full of clothes, etc. This poster was created by women's group in Bengal. Can you write an interesting slogan for the poster? Main har kahi maujood, meri andekhi aur nahi sambhav. कौन सी वह तुम्हारी उपलब्धि जिसमें मेरा नहीं यह भाग औरत को चाहिए अपना अधिकार वॉट डू यू थिंक दिस पोस्टर इज ट्राइंग टू से पेज नंबर फिफ्टी थ्री एक्सरसाइजेस वन आर द स्टेटमेंट्स गिवन अलोंग साइड ट्रू और फॉल्स सपोर्ट योर आंसर विद द यूज ऑफ एन एग्जाम्पल ए All societies do not think similarly about the roles that boys and girls play. B. Our society does not make distinctions between boys and girls when they are growing up. C. Women who stay at home do not work. D. The work that women do is less valued than that of men. 2. Housework is invisible and unpaid work. Housework is physically demanding. Housework is time consuming. Write in your own words what is meant by the terms invisible, physically demanding and time consuming. Give one example of each based on the household tasks undertaken by women in your home. 3. Make a list of toys and games that boys typically play and another for girls. If there is a difference between the two lists, can you think of some reasons why this is so? Does this have any relationship to the roles children have to play as adults? 4. If you have someone working as a domestic help in your house or locality, talk to her and find out a little bit more about her life. Who are her family members? Where is her home? How many hours does she work? How much does she get paid? Write a small story based on these details. Glossary Identity Identity is a sense of self-awareness of who one is. Typically, a person can have several identities. For example, a person can be a girl, a sister and a musician. Double burden literally means a double load. This term is commonly used to describe the women's work situation. It has emerged from a recognition that women typically labour both inside the home, that is housework, and outside. Caregiving Caregiving refers to a range of tasks related to looking after and nurturing. Besides physical tasks, they also involve a strong emotional aspect. Devalued When someone is not given due recognition for a task or job they have done, they can feel devalued. For example, if a boy has put in a lot of effort into making a special birthday gift for his friend, 
and this friend does not say anything about this, then the boy may feel devalued. You were just listening to chapter number 4, titled Growing Up as Boys and Girls. With it, chapter 4 of total 9 chapters ends here. Narrators Shalini Singh and Vebhav Srivastav. You were just listening to this audiobook. Technical Control, Bati Langlingdo. Technical Assistance, Mayank Kumar. Assistance in Production, Tanu Gupta. Direction and Production, Vandana Arimardan. This audiobook is brought to you by CIET and CERT, New Delhi, India.